Hey guys, so as promised, I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to set up unit tests for automated pipelines for your Godot project. Uh, this will be extended later on to other types of languages like Kotlin, and I'll show you how to do that pretty easily. And so the use case for this is when you have someone submit any kind of PR, uh, merge request is called in the uh, GitLab world, um, it will tell you if it is currently breaking, like with this X here. And so you can see right away when you check it out that something's up and you can have them fix it. And um, when it passes, it will be green. And there's all sorts of different reasons you'd want to have this. Uh, you can see when your regressions fail, even when you're uh, maybe not doing pull requests, and say if you're just a single person working on one repository, it can be really handy. And for instance, on this one, you can see when it was broken as well. So if you look down here on this particular pull request, look at the commit history here within here. So they pushed an extra commit to this PR that actually made a fail. And you can kind of see what what made a fail. And so let's take a look. That looks like it might be a bug here. But if you click on this commit here individually, you can see the change. And look, I put a test here that I knew would fail just to show you what a breaking pipeline would look like. And so, um, by the way, this is a great framework, I'll talk about this a little later, called GUT, I believe you pronounce it, it's a G-U-T. Um, it's by BitWest, and uh, I'll show you that a little later and how to install it. So to kind of show you what this looks like on a little lower level, let's go down to the pipelines here. And you can see here from our previous uh, tutorial we did, we did this um, release branch where it would do exports automatically when you come into the release branch. And this one's now the unit test part. And you can see here in this previous part where it actually passed. And actually, I clicked the wrong one. Let's go back real quick. Let's go to this pipeline. And we can see that it passed. So let's take a look at what the output from that run was. And so this, uh, I'll show you the command that was ran. And we'll get a little more in depth with this later. But so I pieced together this from what the gut framework recommended. And it goes through and runs all the tests in a subdirectory matching a particular prefix um, for those files. And um, you can see the test output. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I don't think this is important. But when you're running in a headless mode, you get a lot of errors about resources and things. I don't think that's important. But you can see the tests run OK. So um, we have the script, one script that runs, one test, and it passed. And there was only one test. It's just an example. So, so the other cool thing about this is whenever your pipeline fails, you'll also get emails that warn you about the failure. Uh, however, you have your GitLab uh, settings set up. So that's kind of nice, nice little convenience. And especially if you're working on a team, you can get alerts when something doesn't work right. Um, and you can probably fine grain tune those for your your liking. If you don't want too much noise that people keep breaking. So another common uh, use for these pipelines is to check your code coverage. So code coverage means every you check to see every line of code is actually covered by a test. Um, you can also have branch coverage, which covers, say, all the conditionals. So say a line is all uh, covered but there are multiple conditions and if statement, this kind of thing, where you want to make sure every branch, so every conditional is also covered. That's another metric that can be covered um, by unit tests. However, the framework I'm going to show here for Godot doesn't have that feature yet, but um, he's talking about adding it in the future. It's a very complex uh, thing to add on the fly there, so hopefully we'll see it soon, though. All right, so uh, we talked all about that stuff, so let's just see how do you actually set this up practically to, for your project. The first thing I suggest you do is check out the testing framework for Godot called GUT. You can just go to the asset library, just located right up here. And uh, that's available, I believe, um, a little before version 3. So I think anything in 3 and above, and maybe some later versions of 2 will have it available. So you just click here. And I already have it on this particular project, so it's already downloaded, so I won't do that again. Once you download it, It'll be located in your file system under add-ons. And it's just right here. So, and I'll show you how to use that in a test. Okay, so inside this area, I just have some simple tests. 
I had some stuff before that wasn't using the framework um, from before I wanted to import this framework. And then here I have a simple test for with the framework. And I won't get into this code exactly that I'm testing it because that's not the point of this tutorial. I'll do that maybe another time. And uh, this is just something really basic. So I have one that just, uh, this is a setup test. Uh, so if you have anything to set up, like maybe some mocks or something, you would do this before each. These, these are all documented in his, in his uh, uh, readme. So I'll show that a little bit basic later. But I'd suggest as a... Uh, as a homework, just go ahead and read through uh, your use cases because I'm not going to cover all of them here. This is just basically for setting up your CI. So anyway, this will run before a test. Um, this is an actual test that is run. And um, all that we're doing here is creating a rigid body, adding uh, a child to it. And that's to this test node, actually. And then we're adding another child to that particular rigid body here. And then we're calling the ready on it, and that's all that's happening here. Nothing much. I'm not actually testing anything. I'm just seeing that it actually ran. And then here, uh, this is something super simple. I have a singleton with groups in it, and I'm just seeing that it is what I expect, and that's nothing really too important. Um, but just to make sure that it worked. And then we have a test that we know that would fail. This is what I showed earlier to make the pipeline fail. And that's just some simple tests. And uh, we'll again, we'll talk more about the practicality of actually testing uh, your classes a little later on. And I'm hoping to show some mocking. I haven't gotten real deep into his uh, mocking implementations, but you'll want to do that for anything that does makes that makes calls out to a network or that does something that's outside the scope of what you want to test in your unit test. Because typically, you want to constrain your tests to testing only that specific unit. That's why it's called a unit test. So that specific class that you're testing, um, with some you know some overlap there. You may have something where you want to like roll in there once in a while to get a more integration style for a few classes. But for the most part, you want to constrain it that way. Keep your expectations simple. Keep the test simple. All right. You may have noticed that it also extends from this file here, which is part of the gut framework, and all your unit tests. Uh, will extend from this particular file. And he has that all documented, so let's take a look at that real quick. All right, so this will be linked uh, below, but here is his framework page uh, on, on the GitHub. And so you just go down to creating tests, and here he explains a simple setup for a simple test. And he's got some stuff where he prints things out, and he checks some, ex you know, some expectations, um, you'll see here what I mentioned before, that the script must extend that particular test script. And he kind of explains that life cycle I talked about earlier, how one will run before each test. Uh, you can have one run after for cleaning up some resources or whatever. And then it looks like this is before any test is run. I'll have to look here. I, that might be for just one off to run before just the whole set of tests ran. I'm not sure. We have some things to explore left here, but um, it's pretty great. So just go ahead and read through all that and get an idea of what you're getting into and how to use it. And yeah, you can have some uh, pretty nice tests here to make sure your game objects do what you expect them to do. All right, so now you have all your tests you created, let's say, and you're ready to go. You want to put this in your repository, get it all together. Well, first, of course, like I showed in the previous tutorial, you have to have a GitLab uh, account and it's free. And your private repo is also free. So that aside, you create this .gitlab-ci.yml file like I talked about in the last tutorial. And then all you have to do is add this section here, which let me show you is in another branch I just created called unit test. And here we go. So it's this um, target I call unit test. And it has a new stage called tests. So this uh, implements that stage called tests, so it knows to run this. And it's not restricted based on branch or anything, so it'll run for every single PR that is created and every push, and it will run this command. And on that um, page I showed earlier on the readme, it'll get into this command line arguments. And so let's take a look here. 
this is a particular script that he has in the add-ons for running from the command line. And this, I believe, it mostly facilitates the need to to return zero for success and one for not being a success. The typical Unix conventions. So this CI will work correctly. So if you didn't do that, it wouldn't know if it passed or failed. So when you have a test that fails, it'll return a one, and it'll fail the whole pipeline, and so on. Um, I'd have to spe see the specifics on each one of these. This might be good on a specific. Um, this is include subdirectors. This is part of the test thing. So now um, I can just show the root directory of test, and I'll look for every file with a prefix like this, and I'll run uh, my test, assuming that it's going to be a gut style test. And then this, this it says, just says exit right afterwards. If you don't run with that, I think it hangs and waits for user input. And so you don't want to do that for the CI. You don't want to sit there and hang forever because I think that might also t take up all your, uh, you only have a certain amount of time where you're allowed per month to use uh, the free CIs and GitLab. It's pretty huge. It's like, you know, 20,000 minutes or something nuts, I, I believe. But um, either way, you don't want to have to sit there. Who knows how long it would sit hanging. So you want to exit right away. And uh, let's take a look at the page just to give you a uh, starting point, and I'll link below as well. Okay, so on the front of his page, there's a README, of course, which I looked at earlier. And there's a command line interface link. This will tell you what you need to know. Um, and this goes in depth about every command line um, option you have. And that's how I piece this together. And it recommends, as we saw earlier, to run this way if you're running from the command line. And so I just kind of piece together these for my needs and, and you should do the same kind of see what fits your your case or you can just use mine as, as a starting point um that's fine i'll link that below in at least a gist um all right and that's pretty much all you need is just that file i showed this is that file and then you just need some proper tests for it to run and uh if you don't have any tests yet you can you can go ahead and just um use this as is and just when you add tests it'll start running them that's fine too you know um it's in fact that's probably a good way to, to run your projects is just do things agile and just kind of add a piece and add another piece and you know don't try to do this all at once because it'll just overwhelm you so one last thing i want to talk about here is if you want to test this before you push your pipeline which is a good idea to make sure you can run your unit tests and just kind of see what it would be like in your pipeline um, there's a few ways to do that. You can actually run um, a base scene, which I'll show in another tutorial that comes with uh, gut. Uh, you can actually create a scene type. Um, but the other way is just run from the command line, just like it would with your CI. So let's kind of show that. So first of all, my directory structure is shown here. Um, I have the actual Godot project under a sub area, and everything else is just like assets and things that you know, I don't want to actually export. Because they're uh, they're the pre assets like the uh, the project files and things like that to create images and things like that. So here we'll navigate down to that area. So this is all the base Godot area, and you can know that by looking and seeing um, the project.godot file. You know that's where it is. And so I will paste a command and kind of show you what happens here. So let's look through this. This is just the uh, I have. <laughs> I'm just being lazy. I put Godot here on the desktop. Uh, this says to run that command line script for gut. This is the base command line that uh, will facilitate all your tests. And also, like I mentioned before, will return the proper return code. Um, and we talked about all this stuff before. The last thing that's new is this part here. Um, so echo dollar sign question mark. So in the Unix world, uh, this is the return type of the last thing you ran. And so this is like the return type of this last command here after this semicolon. Um, I'm running git bash here in Windows, and this is the best thing I can do at the moment because I didn't uh, set up all my, uh, there's like a, a Linux subsystem for Windows, I didn't set that up yet. So this is this is pretty good for, for what we're going to do. So let's just see what happens. I can run it. And as you can see here before, just like with the pipeline, uh, we had that one that we forced to fail, and it shows it here. And then also we see that result uh, 1 is returned. So 1 is, in this case, meaning that it um, one of the tests failed. So that's great. That means our pipeline will work correctly. And you'll see this print result zero if you have no tests that fail. Um, so that's one way to test before you set all this stuff up so you don't waste a bunch of time waiting for it to finish and all that in GitLab. And that's uh, that's pretty much it.
that's all I got for you guys today. I'd really appreciate if you guys could uh, subscribe or like the video and uh, ask any questions below so I know uh, what to change or what to add or what you might be looking forward to. Thanks a lot.